Welcome back to 405 Sports. Today we're talking about the UFC Bantamweight division, which is, I mean, it, it it is probably the most stacked division in the UFC, if not just the world. I mean, look at Bellator 2 with Stotts and Sabatello and uh, Pettis. I mean, like, it's, it's good over there too, but it's very good in the UFC, and it was very good tonight. Corey Sanhagen gets the decision win over Chito Vera, and uh, it wasn't close. It was not close at all. And it was the most blasphemous thing. Uh, Bruce Buffer gets to the cards, and you can tell whenever Bruce is going to read a card that's going to be a split decision. And Bruce reads, the judges score the contest, and he goes, 48-47 Vera. And I'm like, what? I mean, what are we what, what, are, what are we watching? At worst, for Cheeto's sake, I thought it was 46-49 Sanhagen. Like, I thought that was as close as it was. And I scored at 50-45. But I just, I, I could see the argument for 49-46, Cheeto, or Corey. And I was like, oh my gosh, Corey's going to get screwed. He's going to get screwed and it's going to be the biggest. And if that, and if, if, if Corey did get screwed, I think it would have been overturned. Because I think he literally would have went and been like, there's just no way I lost that fight. If I, I'm not kidding because think about it. Think about it. Two judges. Two judges gave it 50-45 Corey and 49-46 Corey. And the other saw it 48-47 Cheeto? I mean, where do you even get that? I don't know. That's, that, that is, that is terrible. I, that, that's all I know. But let's go ahead and just talk about this bandwidth division because it is absolutely stacked. So obviously, Aljo He's only probably have, he's going to probably have like two more fights at Bantamweight. Maybe three at most, I would say. I just don't know. He's, his best his best friend slash teammate, Marab Devashvili, is the number one contender. He got that because obviously he beat Peter Yan better than Sean did. So I think that was valid for him to jump Sugar Sean. But how I see it playing out is if Henry loses to Aljo, at 135 at UFC 289, 88, 88. If Henry loses and Aljo wins, I think Aljo defends against Sean, and that's his last fight at Bantamweight, and he will go up to featherweight, and maybe we could get a pretty good fight, a super fight between Aljo and Volkanovski, which I actually think would be pretty good, because Aljo's really not that small for for Bantamweight, so I think that'd be a good, fun fight. I think what you do with Marab is you do... Have him fight Corey Sanhagen. I know that's not the coolest thing in the world to do, but the problem is you don't want Marab to sit out a year and a half and then give him the title shot. Like, he's just, you're not going to do well. So I say you do, you know, the, I don't know. The problem is, is say Marab wins against Corey and then say Aljo wins against Sean and then they just, you know, have nothing. Obviously, a lot of, a lot will move since then. You know, guys like Adrian Yanis, Song Yadong, Umar, Namagamedov. You know, those guys are gonna have more fights by then. So it's there's a lot to go over. So Sugar Sean, his next fight probably Aljo after the Henry fight. If Henry wins, then I don't know what's gonna happen there. They might have to do a number one contenders fight between him and Marab. That's probably what will happen. So Mar- Marlon Vera and Peter Yan. That actually wouldn't be the worst fight to make right now. Both of those guys just got uh, demolished in those fights. So actually, that wouldn't be the worst fight to make. I'd actually kind of like to see that fight since those guys don't like each other. I think that's a. I think that makes sense personally. I'm just it. it the bantamweight division is just it's 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 insanely stacked. Um, Rob Font is fighting. Well, let me scroll down even more because. Rob Font is fighting Adrian Yanez, which is a big jump. That's a big jump. And so, if he wins that fight, you know, that's jumping guys like Song Yadong, Pedro Munoz, Ricky Simone, Umar Namagamedov. So, Adrian Yanez could see himself in that pitcher, the title pitcher, if, you know, he gets the win at UFC 287 in a couple weeks. Umar Namagamedov is calling out everyone. I mean, literally, just he's just calling out everyone. I don't really know. What's next for him? So Dominic Cruz is obviously off of a loss to Chito Vera, which he was dominating the fight. But uh, 
Cody Garbrandt came out and said that he has apparently been offered to fight Dominic Cruz in a rematch, you know, from 2016, where uh, Cody got the nod. I think he won 48-47 on two judges and 49-46 on another. And that's when he became the champion, and that's just when everything kind of fell apart for Cody Garbrandt. But he said he's been offered the Dominic Cruz rematch, which would be kind of cool because I feel like that's a fair fight. Maybe not a fair fight for Cody Garbrandt. I don't feel like he he's very deserving of getting the number seven guy, especially after his fight at UFC 285. I felt I wasn't very impressed by Cody Garbrandt, and not that you know he wasn't good. It was just like I don't think he showed enough to be fighting the number seven guy when you have guys like Umar Namangamedov, you have guys like Jonathan Martinez, Chris Gutierrez, Adrian Yanez, Ricky Simone. I feel like all those guys deserve that fight over Cody. But I digress. Cody is a very good fighter, obviously, and he's been a champion, so he knows what it takes to win. It's just I, I don't know if he deserves that fight. Song Dong is supposed to fight Ricky Simone here pretty soon. I'll probably take Song Yedong in that one. And then if he wins that, I would say you could do Song Yedong versus Adrian Yanez or just Rob Font, whoever wins that fight. I feel like that's kind of like a little bracket style. You take the winner of Ricky Simone versus Song Yedong and the winner of Adrian Yanez and Rob Font. And whoever wins those fights, you give them, you know, the two winners fight each other. I feel like that's pretty fair. So for the number nine, Pedro Munoz, he actually fights on April 15th against Chris Gutierrez. I'll probably favor Gutierrez in that fight. He's been he's been on fire recently, so I would I would give him the nod in that fight. But I don't know what you do with the winner of that one. Maybe I don't know, that's 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 tough to say. Maybe the loser of one of those two fights that I said. Probably. I don't know. The the Bantamweight division, I can't get over the fact that how stacked it is. And uh, uh, here's a guy I haven't even, I've barely talked about. Jonathan Martinez just got the win against Saeed Nurmagomedov. I don't know how much he won that fight. I really felt that Saeed won that fight over him. But it was, it was, it was close. It was close. This division is just, it, it's full of killers. It is, it is literally full of killers. And I don't, I don't know what else to say besides this is the best division in all of mixed martial arts, all of the UFC. It it is just a stacked division, and then two guys that I would probably say that deserve a ranking or maybe a fight together. I don't know. They're probably too young to fight each other. They probably want to save each other, you know, not really have them fight each other until like they're bigger names. But Javed Basharat and Mar- Mario Batista, those two guys are absolute beast. I love those guys. Bashrat is one of the twins, one of the Bashrat twins, obviously. And then Batista is off of a win at Fight Night, uh, Village Really versus Yan. I mean, those two guys are great Bantamweight contenders for the future. I just, I, those are two guys off the top of my head that I can think of that will be exciting for this top 15 here pretty quick. So, I, I just love this Bantamweight division. It's a very active division, you know? Like, I... As you know, I mean, Sean O'Malley fought at 280. Marlon Vera's fought twice since then. Peter Yon's fought twice since, you know, he fought at 280 and since then. Corey fought. I don't know. Rob took a little bit of time off, but that was well-deserved. He was fighting a lot. Song Dong. I mean, these. it's just a It's a killer's row division. It's a great division. Probably the be- It is the best division in all of mixed martial arts. And yeah, I just thought I would break down the division just a little bit. Thank you guys for watching the video. Don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe for more UFC content and all sports content. Thank you for watching the video. Peace.